Ripley can't hear you. Hello everybody, can you hear me now? Apologies guys, we're just having a technical difficulty. Cool, we can hear you. Great, off we go. Sorry about that. Hi everybody, welcome again uh, to the BUI uh, webinar. I'm Wayne, I'm a sales consultant at BUI. Um, and today's webinar is about creating your human file with uh, our team uh, from Cyber Risk Away. From Cyber Risk Away, I've got Stephen on the, the video side there. He's gonna be taking us through some great products that he's got, got to offer. The team um, assisting and running today is Andre and Taylor. And, um, and uh, so yeah, so thank you so much for joining us. I know time is critical and this is only gonna be a 30 minute session. So I think it's gonna be quite informative. Um, so basically the agenda for today, I'm gonna to just do a quick brief introduction into who BUI is and what we do, specifically in around cybersecurity. And I'm going to hand over to Stephen, who's going to focus on Cyber Risk Aware. Um, just to let you guys know that in the bottom right-hand section of your, uh, your computers, there's a little chat icon. Please feel free to shoot any questions, comments. Um, apparently, I've got an echo. Okay, no, we're still good to go. So yeah, again, if you have a look at the bottom and there's a chat icon, please feel free to drop a couple of questions and uh, we'll definitely answer them or we'll answer them after the, the webinar. There's, to, there's gonna be a couple of uh, polls that are gonna come up during the uh, webinar. So please feel free to um, interact with us so we can uh, also guide our webinar in the right direction. Just a quick introduction into BUI. So BI, obviously we're award-winning partner. We obviously specialize in cloud identity. And if you guys know us at BUI, we're very cyber security aware. We have offices in Gauteng, which was where I'm based, and KZN, as well as Cape Town in the Western Cape. Currently, most of us are sitting at home during this time, but we're always online and ready to assist wherever we can. We are part of the first group, so um, that does assist with multiple facets and offerings that we can assist every single customer within Africa, specifically South Africa. Not to brag, but these are just some of the awards that BI has uh, won recently, actually. We're 2020 um, uh, Country Partner, Microsoft Country Partner of the Year. Um, we've, uh, we've obtained our Azure Expert MSP. Um, please feel free to reach out to us and we can explain exactly what that means. It's a very, very amazing um, um, thing that we've done at BUR. And the most important part of specifically around today, we are Microsoft Security Partner of the Year for 2020. 2019, I think 2018 and 20, well, 2017 too. So we're very, very, very um, uh, aware of the security solutions that we can offer each and every single customer. Just some of the things that we can offer with cybersecurity. So BUI has got a cyber SOC, um, we're situated in Bryanston, and we deliver all kinds of uh, cybersecurity solutions to the customer, including penetration tests, cybersecurity services. Um, penetration tests is one of my favorites. Um, there's another webinar coming up with regards to the penetration test hosted by the head of the cybersecurity, Hilton. So please feel free to reach out to us for that webinar. We also do cyber disaster recovery as a service. So once people are in, then we can mitigate that afterwards. So also reach out to us. We obviously Microsoft 365 uh, security managed services. Um, so we come in and have a look at how your Microsoft solutions have been set up and we can guide you through those processes too. We are people too, but our com uh, commitment to you is we literally get things done. That's our really go-to at BUI. We get everything sorted. We literally consult with you with our, as a customer. We consolidate all our plans, and then we work together results and impress, hopefully we do. We definitely add value. So not just we come in, do the solution and leave. We're also teachers as well as uh, hopefully industry leaders. 
Um, we literally assist customers with uh, mitigating risks and then discuss that afterwards with you so we don't have to go through the same process that happened before. We give it our all. We've got quite a lot of consultants, over 120 certified professionals, and we reach out to each and, indiv each and every individual to assist um, specifically in, in any customer's needs. Our commitment, we actually team up. So with us, we team up with us at BUI, we team up with multiple partners, but verified BUI partners too. Obviously, we can't deliver every single thing with regards to security and security platforms. So we definitely team up with partners like CyberRisk Aware, who's pretty much with uh, us on the call today. That we assist, CyberRisk Aware is, assists customers to strengthen and um, uh, strengthen every security posture. We understand that about 90% of security incidents are caused by lack of staff awareness. Um, so basically to assist and understand how that works, I'm going to actually be handing over to um, Stephen from Cyber Risk Aware to take us through the product uh, that we as BUR can offer through Cyber Risk Aware. So I'm going to hand over to you, Stephen. I know you're going to take over the slides. No audio. Apologies, guys. Um, we're just going to sort that issue out. Can you hear me now? Yeah, loud and clear. Thanks, Stephen. Over to you. Okay, fantastic. Um, technical glitches, you know it's live, and I'm an Irish man. I love to talk. So lovely to, to be here this morning um, with our, our partner, BUI. And thank you, Wayne, for the kind introduction. Um, hope you can see my slides. A quick bit of background on myself. Um, I'm a Chief Information Security Officer, so I know what it's like on the inside of um, a client's network and the difficulties one faces, whether it be to buy technical defenses, whether it be to buy cyber insurance, what does one do? But as a CISO, having implemented so many technical solutions, I realized that cyber criminals were actively targeting my staff and I hadn't done a good enough job of helping them. So. I stepped out of the CISO role. We founded Cyber Risk Aware in 2016, and we've been growing and having fantastic success. But that's really that success is helping our clients help their staff defend the network together. And that's the beautiful side of this, that it's about helping our staff. It's bringing them on a journey. And together with BUI, we see uh, you know, fantastic opportunity to help our, our, our mutual clients in that area. So. As a platform, uh, what we do is we help companies create a human firewall. So we mitigate the insider threat. And this insider threat, I'll explain in a second, but is often down to the accidental actions of staff. And so for companies to help their staff, they have to first understand where are the gaps in knowledge? Where are the susceptibilities in the organization? Is it a certain office? Is it a certain user? Is it a certain um, country location? What is it? So. As a platform, we help assess and mitigate human cyber risks by implementing a human firewall. And we do that not only by delivering scheduled phishing simulations, scheduled security awareness training, but also in real time. So we're training staff in their exact moment of need. And I'll explain that in a few more seconds. So we have a first poll question, um, just to make people aware that that has come up. So please vote now. And I will pause just for one or two seconds to enable people to vote. So whilst everyone is feverishly clicking and voting and doing what you need to do, I talked about the insider threat. Every organization in the world faces this. It's about a modern workplace. It's about securing that modern workplace. We now have um, an issue where people are having to work from home. So it's that modern workplace has expanded outside of the office and it has exacerbated the issues around what staff are doing. There was a rush to buy laptops to get people up and running remotely. Are they secure as maybe the desktops or the other infrastructure that we would have used internally? We're seeing a lot of evidence to say that it, it isn't as secure. And 
people are sharing that equipment with family members so that they can do certain things at home. You've got you know, children and teenagers and other people installing applications on those devices. Are they secure? So this comes back to the accidental insider, the inadvertent actions of staff that introduce risk. And that is one of the biggest opportunities to offset against a cyber incident. Over 90%, over 90% of security incidents are caused by the actions of staff, mostly accidental insiders. And if we can focus on that and reduce that 90% down, well, then we're in a really good place because technically all no, over a hundred billion dollars is being spent on technology. Is the number of security incidents going up or down? It's going up. It's not staying flat. It ain't going down. So that tells us all our investment doesn't seem to be working. Yes, it helps to a certain degree and gets us so far. But if we keep doing the same things, we're going to keep getting the same results. And that is the increasing in number of incidents. So we have to focus on the person. That's the last line of defense. The accidental insider clicking on links, opening email attachments, giving away their username and password, using the same password across multiple accounts, not knowing how to securely um, save data, protect data. All these free software being downloaded to install on devices. They are just some of the examples of accidental actions that give rise to, it's a convenience thing. They need to do their, their job. So we have to tackle that. The actions of an accidental insider ultimately leads to them becoming compromised. That's how ransomware gets installed on devices by clicking on the link or downloading free software. It encrypts all of the data on the, the device, but also on the corporate network, bringing lots of companies down. And you can see that every single day, there's very um, large incidents happening against some of the biggest companies in the world that you think that that would never happen. They've got big budgets, yet the actions of one staff member, one email, and brings the whole company down. I'm a runner myself, I use Garmin, and I couldn't use my Garmin watch. I was a bit peeved about that, but I actually felt very sorry for the security folks in Garmin because ransomware affected that whole organization and affected hundreds of millions of people around the world as a consequence. So compromised insider, the accidental insider, that's who we have to help. The malicious insider is also unfortunately out there. I've had some personal war stories where I've had to face that. And uh, we don't know what happens in people's homes. Maybe they're under financial pressure. They may be approached by somebody to say they'll be, give them money if they steal data or if they install um, ransomware, for example. That happened against Tesla, the car manufacturer. An employee was approached, plug in a USB key, I'll give you half a million dollars. Thankfully, owing to security awareness training, that staff member reported it to the security team and that person was, was uh, arrested and no incident happened. So the power of security awareness can be quite profound when we raise this and talk about it and create a network of human sensors. Let's go on to my next slide. So common staff behaviors, I've touched on a few of them. So clicking on the links, opening email attachments. Think before you click. It's National Cybersecurity Awareness Month. Think before you click. And like a Frisbee, like uh, I often use this as a bit of a joke, but like a Frisbee, if in doubt, throw it out. Just get rid of it. Don't open it. Don't be curious. Curiosity killed the cat. And you know, if it's too good to be true, Yes, it is. You don't get free money in this world, guys. We know that. Free software, you get more than you bargain for without a shadow of a doubt. Reusing passwords across accounts. I know we all say, don't write down your password. You must have a different password on your accounts. How the hell are we supposed to remember all these? Well, you can use password managers. I don't even, I've got hundreds of passwords. I don't even know what they are. But, so that means I can reuse different passwords. I'm um, sorry. I can use different passwords across all my different accounts without having the same one because they get once one gets compromised, if you're using the same one, you're going to you know, lose access to all your accounts, your digital identity, and we don't want that to happen. There's also the one department sharing accounts and passwords. Yes, I had to deal with that before. There was billions of dollars in bank accounts, and the finance department had put passwords, usernames and passwords in the spreadsheet that the whole company could get access to. There was a bit of an eye-opener uh, moment for them when we had that conversation, but thankfully we got over that as well. Incrementing numbers by one in passwords, downloading free software, not knowing how to um, securely um, surf the web. We haven't done a good enough job of showing people good versus bad in an easy way to understand. And then there's those risks outside of the office. I've alluded to them. We're sharing devices with family members. You know, are we giving our username and password to those? You know, what are they doing with that? Weak data protection practices. So Poppy Act has come out in South Africa, we all know. That's the personal um, protection of uh, private information. And 
where does that data have to reside? Who should have access to it? Should it be in public file sharing utilities? These are all questions that have to be understood by every staff member, not just by the security team. So we have to help staff understand what the obligation and responsibility is of the company, but how they fit into that, that they have a role. It's not just business, it's not just the IT function. It's cyber is a business risk. It's not an IT risk anymore. And last but not least, security policies. Again, I used to write all the policies. I was the only person who understood what was in security policies. And every company in the world is suffering with this as well. People, staff do not know maybe that there's a policy at all or what definitely what's inside it. This often brings a good chuckle in the room. So we have to break down policies into bite-sized chunks to help show staff that A, there's a policy, but B, that the company is asking their help to, do, to not do certain things. And therein lies the opportunity around real-time training where if we see staff doing stuff on the network and training them in response to what you see, that's, that's a game changer. And I'll talk about that real-time in a few seconds. So as a platform, um, together with BUI, it's hosted in Microsoft uh, Azure. It's GCHQ accredited, which is the UK National Cybersecurity Division, and they've accredited the platform from a capability perspective, but also a quality of content in helping to raise awareness with staff. Very difficult accreditation, but we're very proud to have gotten that. We've also just been added into the Gartner Market Guide as um, a unique and innovative solution as addressing the human cybersecurity risks. So again, it's a, a well-accomplished platform and very well accredited um, in the marketplace. And on that platform, once you gain access to a dedicated portal per client, which ensures that data privacy is, uh, is catered for, as in when you add in your staff email addresses, all of that is protected. It's encrypted at rest and in transit to ensure that privacy by design is, uh, is employed. But what you can do on the platform is you can run the most realistic phishing scenarios possible. Again, it's not to trick staff, it's to help staff understand what a real attack looks like and what they should do if they receive such an email. That means that the company can respond if it's detected and reported and therefore quarantine messages and avoid this costly incident, right? So it's super important to create that uh, human alarm where someone sees something, they don't think it looks right because of the training and the phishing simulations that they can report and we can respond to it. So that's super important. And what we typically see as a benchmark around phishing is between 30 and 50%. And over six to 12 months, that 30 to 60, 50% is reduced to between two and 10%. That's a 92% reduction in the susceptibility to phishing emails. And if I go back to that statistic that over 90% of security incidents are, uh, start off with people, it's predominantly phishing emails. So if you can reduce the risk of phishing emails by up to 92%, which are 90% of the issue in the first place, you can see that you're spending money in the most um, important area of cybersecurity, because it's most likely that that's where your incident's gonna start. SMS, text message, it's called smishing. That's the same thing as emails, only it's SMS, uh, SMS text variant. So a lot of people are being tricked to click on links in SMS. So again, raise awareness of what that looks like off the platform. Knowledge assessments, very powerful. Assess knowledge of staff to see who needs training and who doesn't need training. Very powerful because normally training is sent out to everybody. That's a cost. That takes people away from their job. It can cause a bit of ill will in the organization. Cybersecurity function has to bring people on a journey. We have to help staff, as I said. So if we're going to help staff, well, let's assess to see who needs training on passwords. Let's assess to see who needs training on data protection. Let's assess who needs help on web protection or email security, whatever it is. Let's say you send out an assessment to 100 people and 90 people answer the questions correctly to your satisfaction in our assessments, but then you only need to train 10 people. You're only taking 10 people away from their day job. That's a win-win for everybody. So incredibly powerful. And you could also assess post the training. So once they've taken the training to see how effective it has been. Don't assume the training has been effective. Again, that's historically what's happened. We've sent training once a year. It's been a compliance tick the box exercise. It has not reduced the risk one iota. If anything, it has increased it because it's compliance tick the box. It wasn't effective. Again, I go back to the statistics. Cyber incidents are going up, not down. We have to change what we're doing, but we can do it in a thoughtful way. So by recreating phishing and SMS phishing scenarios, assessing who needs help, 
then we're able to send the content that is really effective in changing their user behavior going forward. And you can upload your own content. So you can have your own courses, your own videos, your own presentations, your own policies on any topic, not just on cyber. So again, if, if those of us who are on the call today are in cybersecurity or IT, you can also now talk to your colleagues in the HR and compliance department to say, I've got this platform. You can also upload your content alongside mine. And now we've got a single pane of glass where we can consolidate, we can reduce costs, but actually get out and a really important message where we're mitigating human cyber risks. And you're getting your compliance training and other HR or health and safety training as well. And you'll have all the results in there. So that's a win-win for everybody as well. And then that leads me on to the, the content itself. So 10 minutes of e-learning per module. So small and often. So we're going to assess to see who needs training. And then those who do, we're only going to give them 10 minutes of e-learning on individual topics. And we're going to combine that with security videos, or, which are about one to three minutes in duration as well. So small and often. And then once you've sent out your training campaigns, you then get to see who's taken the training, who hasn't taken the training, who's answered the questions correctly, who hasn't, um, who's uh, been susceptible to phishing emails, who's been susceptible to SMS. You have all of that data that gives you this human cyber risk score to see, is it this office? Is it this user? Is it this department? Is it this country? You can see all of that. You can also see what device they were using, what operating system they, were, they had on the device. Was it patched? Was the, the browser patched? Again, you start to see this human vulnerability assessment alongside the technical vulnerability assessment. Together, by plugging technical, technical vulnerabilities and human vulnerabilities, that is going to close off 99% of the attack vectors that every company is facing. And that's in Power BI in the reporting stack. Now, I alluded to the fact that we don't just do all this schedule training. We do it in real time. So a quick poll question. So I'm conscious of time. So whilst you're all busy clicking and doing uh, your, your polling and voting, um, just to, to, I suppose, to near conclusion, yeah. what's different about our platform is not only scheduling training, you can now integrate with the Microsoft security stack. And again, talking to BUI uh, and in conjunction with ourselves, you can now maximize the return on your investment into Microsoft Sentinel, Advanced Threat Protection, Intune, Azure Identity Protect, that if they generate alarms, you can now send training messages, any content, policy snippets, formal training courses, email tips, Skype for business messages in response to that alarm. So if Wayne tried to download free software today, we could, and that was detected by Sentinel, you could send a message to Wayne explaining the dangers of free software right then and there. If we saw Wayne saving data in a public file sharing utility like Google Drive when he wasn't supposed to, because you're monitoring that network traffic, mm -hmm. send a message which may have the snippet of the policy to say to Wayne, under no circumstances, save company data off the company network. Click here to acknowledge. So now you're getting all this data of risky behaviors. You're reminding staff of their obligation and responsibilities to policy, and they are not going to repeat offend anymore. That's a game changer, and I'd love to go through that in more detail, maybe post this session, uh, and we'd be happy to do that. Not just Microsoft stack, by the way. So if you use other vendor technologies, um, we cater for any, we're vendor agnostic. We can cater for anything. So again, the poll questions are coming thick and fast. I'll let you um, vote on that poll question. That's just come in there too. And I like I the... Uh... Uh, sorry, Stephen, I like the previous poll, which is uh, um, people do have awareness and staff training on the call, which is good. So there was no nevers. And I think we need to also chat to the guys on the call because you can see a lot of people have once a year and quarterly. So it's a lot of tick boxes, but we can definitely help them with actually doing better training instead of just ticking a box. But in comes the next uh, poll. You guys can vote. Yeah, look at that. Office security outside. Thank you so much. I appreciate that. Okay. So I alluded to the fact of how, how um, effective this is, a 92% improvement in reducing human cyber risks. Baseline phishing percentage is 30% at least. Within 90 days, that's three months, halved, 50% within three months, boom. You're not gonna see any other control as effective as this. And doing small and often, combining phishing and training, this is where you see it. 
But then when you go to that game changing where you're training in response to security alarms, you're reducing the cost of running a security awareness program because it's automated. You're leveraging what the network is telling you. It's behavior driven. Yeah. So we have seen that we're able to reduce the cost of running a security awareness program by up to 44% because it's automated. Whether it be automated of onboarding, uh, onboarding training because you have a brand new account logged in for the first time, boom, deliver the training. No in-person training needed anymore. Not that you probably can do that any, given the offices are closed. So loads of use cases. So some key takeaways, run your regular phishing simulations and security awareness training at, at least quarterly. Monthly for maybe those higher uh, privileged accounts, whether it be senior executives or those that have privileged access um, accounts. Recreate any type of scenario. Multi-factor authentication, um, you know, there's various elements out there that stops 99% of account takeovers. So then that's a big thing that's going on. Protect your password uh, documents, put them in zip files, put a, protect, uh, a password on those as well. Limit access to only those who need to do it. Um, backups, backups, backups. So ransomware, huge issue. Please keep backups off the network, not just on the network because something gets encrypted, they will encrypt your backups and then you're goosed. So you don't want that. Yeah. Vulnerability assessments, patch the, the system updates, but also patch the software. That's often missed, patch software. Only use company issued hardened devices for work where possible. Turn on your AV and your firewall, just so it's best practice. Use a VPN to connect to the office if possible. Please talk to BAY for any further assistance. And we look forward to helping uh, you in protecting your staff and creating a human firewall. And thank you so much for attending today. Thank, thank you, everybody. <laughs> Sorry. Yeah. So um, the last poll was actually quite nice. Uh, when would uh, training staff in real time be useful for you and your staff? So office security outside the office tips when connecting to the network remotely. So thanks for that, guys. Thanks everybody for uh, joining us. Um, obviously you can give us at BUI a, a shout. Um, uh, there was a lot of invites that went out. Please reply to those mails. You can reach out to myself um, and we can definitely have a discussion. If you want to post this uh, webinar, I can spin Stephen up. We can have a, maybe a slightly deeper dive into your organization and what you're looking for. But uh, again, thank you so much for your time and uh, we look forward to hearing from you. If there's any other questions, we'll stay on a little bit longer. Um, and just uh, pop some questions into the chat. So myself and Stephen will be here for Thank another so two or three more minutes. Yeah. Thanks, Stephen. Thank you. Thanks, Arthur, for joining. Always joining all our webinars. Appreciate it. <laughs>